It's mid-August in Northern Virginia. Temperatures are climbing to the triple digits while the suffocating humidity beckons a power-packed thunderstorm. Yet, even in these conditions, hundreds of concerned parents, community members, teachers, and school staff members are lined up outside the Loudoun County School Board meeting. Each is huddled outside the doors of the air-conditioned building, only being allowed inside in a small group to say a few words at a time to the representatives who made a conscious decision to make them wait out in the elements. As you can guess, this resolute turnout is in direct response to a highly controversial proposed policy. Among other demands, the policy requires teachers and staff to refer to students based on their professed gender identity rather than their biological reality. This would include students as young as kindergarten. The policy forces teachers and staff to call girls boys and boys girls, all without parental notification or consent. It's so objectionable that one teacher announces her resignation during the meeting. Even so, the school board will vote a day later to ignore the tidal wave of opposition and adopt the policy anyway. And that's typical for the Loudoun County School Board. A few months earlier, the board waved aside concerns raised by a mother who likened the district's ideologically charged emphasis on race to her upbringing in Maoist China. All of this seems very familiar, she said. The communist regime used the same critical theory to divide people. The only difference is they use class instead of race. Like this mom, more and more parents are starting to wake up to the reality of what their children are being subjected to day in and day out in America's public schools. Racial and sexual politics are the prime directive of school systems like Loudoun County's. Every child will be immersed. Every teacher will be forced to toe the line. No dissent allowed. The school district seems oblivious to the fact that they're losing not just conservative parents, but the great bulk of middle-of-the-road families who simply want their children to get a quality academic education. And that's not just happening in Loudoun County, Virginia, but all over the country. From coast to coast, parents have simply had enough. Too many schools have become swept up in what journalist Christopher Rufo has called a school-to-radicalism pipeline. Parents don't want their children taught that they are oppressors if they have the wrong skin color. For example, many schools are now teaching young white children that they are evil simply because they are white. How is that any better than schools in the past teaching the wicked falsehood that young black children were somehow inferior because of the color of their skin? No parent wants their children immersed in this harmful ideology. But that's not the only way these radical theories are impacting children in today's schools. Alliance Defending Freedom, together with the lead counsel from the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, went to court to stop a school district policy in Madison, Wisconsin, that instructed teachers to hide from parents or even lie to them about the fact that their child was identifying as the opposite sex during school hours. It's also affecting female sports. With ADF's help, the parents of female athletes are standing up for their daughters who are losing spots on winner's podiums to males who subjectively identify as female. This could be the new reality for aspiring female athletes across the nation. What should schools do? The wise choice would be to depoliticize public education. Get back to an academic emphasis, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, along with values-based instruction focused on general ideas that unite us as Americans, such as honesty, hard work, and love of country. And if they refuse to correct course, a growing number of families will justifiably demand alternatives to the chaos reigning in their local public schools. A political and legal tipping point is fast approaching. States will be forced to offer some form of school choice where public funds follow parents' decisions on where they send their children to school. As former Attorney General William Barr recently put it, the time has come to admit that the approach of giving militantly secularist government-run schools a monopoly over publicly funded education has become a disaster. To save religious liberty, we must save our families and their children from the extreme secular progressivism that pervades our current system of public schools. School leaders are relentlessly advancing their radical agenda. But parents who were once too complacent are no longer content to sit idly by while their tax dollars are used to indoctrinate their children with ideology that contradicts the values and beliefs they teach at home. As we're seeing in Loudoun County and across the country, 
parents have a limit. Public schools have crossed the line. To find out more about what Alliance Defending Freedom is doing in this crucial area, visit adflegal.org. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on Facebook today.